your windows, lock your doors, keep your loved ones near, time is running out, it's here for Welcome to Ear for Fear. This is Donovan. Hey, and I'm Rick. And this is the podcast where we talk about scary movies or movies trying to be scary. Uh, today we're talking about uh, Dario Argento's 1977 Suspiria. Supposedly this is his, uh, people say this is his masterpiece. Uh, before we dive in, quick uh, synopsis. Uh, Susie is an American dancer, is about to attend a prestigious ballet school in Germany. As soon as she arrives, another student at the school is brutally murdered. Sinister deeds are afoot, and Susie starts to think that the school uh, houses something very evil. Witch. Initial thoughts, what'd you think? I actually really like this movie. <laughs> That's cool. Uh I like this movie too. It's definitely interesting to that I saw the remake before I saw this one. Um, there's a lot of buzz around the remake um a year or two ago when it came out. God, time flies, man. It really um, does. I so I watched this not too long after it came out on home video, and that movie's like a solid two hour movie. This movie's kind of a tight one forty. Mm-hmm. Um I, I guess we can uh, let's just like start off right off the back. Uh, spoiler alerts. Um, yeah, I think we both recommend this movie if you haven't seen it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a classic, well worth your time. The color palette alone is kind of, oh. and the set dressing and the wallpaper <laughs> is <Dude>. definitely <laughs> worth what the watch I, by I, itself. I could even say that better. Uh, yeah, dude, that is spot on. It's it's visually very pretty right i mean mm-hmm. all the reds and greens and purples i mean i, I yeah but, I, I mean this is what it sets the tone and not to mention the music which we'll talk about but yeah it's, it's a beautiful beautiful movie it really is man i i i am uh i'm kind of disappointed in myself that i hadn't seen this before i we've talked about this i not a huge fan of italian horror but I've definitely changed my mind. Uh, I think I'm going to, uh, you know, uh, 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 visit uh, more of uh, Dario Argento's films. I, I've seen a, a few uh, uh, Fulci's. Uh, I think uh, Zombie or Zombie 2, uh, City of the Living Dead, or I, I know it as Gates of Hell. But I think that's what soured my taste for horror was was Fulci's movies. Not to, not to say that they're not good, but they they, they just... I don't know. I, I feel like they're kind of they're kind of a lot of blood, a lot, a lot of stabbing, a lot of uh, overdrawn kills um, and almost unnecessary to me. And in this movie, as we'll talk about it, that was the one thing I think I didn't like about the movie, but I enjoyed the movie. I would say the ending was a little hokey. And a couple of the killings. Yeah, you agree. Yeah, I can see your face. No, I just, <laughs> it's just I find it so funny because if we're going to talk about the remake, I think it's going to be hard to talk about this remake from my perspective, um, just because I think that movie kind of dials everything this movie is doing up to like, you know, like an nth degree, um, because that movie is very hokey, but it also takes itself very seriously. Um, it's just all the stuff with the witches. It's just wild. Um, it's it is. It's, and it's wild. Yeah. 
you know, we talked about last week, uh, what's that movie called? Good Night Mommy. Yeah. And, you know, that has like a mystery that's being doled out over time with, you know, a red herring with a mother. Um, well, as we talked in that podcast, I felt like that movie tips its hand and it's revealed very early in the movie. This movie doesn't, and it's better for it. There's this air of mystery that's kind of sprinkled throughout most of the film's running time that isn't revealed until like two thirds of the way in, and it's better for it. Um, I don't know why that's the case, but it works here. It really does. Um, I, yeah, I, I really did like this movie a lot. It just, I mean, everything about it, it just, the, uh, it the, starts off right away with really cool <laughs> flourishes. Um, immediately music, color, everything. I mean, as, as quickly as she gets off of that, uh, of the plane, to, uh, at the terminal, to, she's in. Isn't this funny? And you and I, we've done this before. We did this with the change lane and the others. And I think we did this on another set of movies where uh, in Goodnight Mommy, it was, it was, I mean, it was set in Austria, but it, it was German subtitled. This movie takes place in Germany. That's, you know, I love these little tiny coincidences and that's all they are. We didn't plan this. We just said, hey, let's grab two movies and here we go. I wasn't expecting this movie to be in all English. That's for sure. Um, I was expecting I, it to be like Italian or something or French because uh, aren't they in France or something? Uh, no, they're in Germany. Germany? Yeah, they're in Germany. Uh, no, I, I think I knew this was not going to be subtitled. Um, I I don't think it, it really took away from well, anything. I'm, I'm nitpicking you here. Yeah. But, you know, for like, let's say you were speaking German. Yeah. This movie wouldn't be subtitled for you, assuming this was a German language film, right? Yeah. So let's just say non-English or whatever. Yeah, non-English. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, because I, I, I know non-English speakers are seeing this movie in subtitles, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Um, I tried. And by the way, I tried to learn German when I was in high school. Holy thing. That that, that language kicked my ass. I, I, <laughs> the only German word I need to know is Gesundheit. Oh, Gesundheit. Yeah. 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 Uh, you, there's also nine, right? That just means no. Yeah. I wish I, you know, I, I took a German in high school. I want to say junior year. I lasted, I think, about uh, maybe two thirds of the way through, and I just wasn't getting it. And I took it because my, you know, as you know, my grandmother was born in Germany, and and I used to hear her all the time talking in German to her friends. And she would have those uh, in the ba- in the bathroom. She would have the uh, they were like soap opera soap opera magazines, and they were all in German. Of course, I never understood any of it. And I'm like, it'd be kind of cool to to learn it, and then. Talked to, even though she spoke English, but she had a real thick, you know, accent. I wanted to do. I just stunk at it. I was not good at German, <laughs> you know. Uh, when you're older, like every language is hard to learn, though. You know, you just have to stick with it and spend a lot of time with it and just be very bad at it for a really long time, right? But you know, like when something's that hard, you're just like, yeah, if I'm not going to be using this my whole life, then uh, whatever. Yeah, yeah. You know? True. But uh, yeah, right off the back, this movie's doing some stuff I'm already really into. Um, I think that if this was like in a student film, I'd be like scoffing at it. But um, in this movie, it's really, really cool. Uh, it's like she gets off the train. There's like a woman going out like these uh, airport doors. Yeah. It's doing like weird zooms. The music is stopping when it cuts and then it resumes when it goes back to the original shot. And I'm just kind of like into all this stuff. The music's really good and interesting. Yeah. We already know this is like the key character of the film because it's given her so much attention and she looks amazing. Um, it's a, it's a lot to like. It's, it, I mean, within that first couple minutes, it's like, and, and, and uh, Argento introduces all he, in, in, red is dominates this film. It is everywhere. The, the the woman you're talking about all all in, uh, her dress was all red the gentleman right behind uh, her when she's walking out of the terminal his tie black and all red you know all these glimpses of red 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 you know and it, i think it kind of sets the tone you know um <clears throat> and then i think she's she comes out and it's and it's storming and she finally waves down the taxi and as she's as they're driving you see you see the, the the rain is is just coming down, but you see glimpses of 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 red light hitting it and then green light hitting it and it's it's very impressive. I just it's it's I like it. And then the the music kicks in. 
and it's just yeah. it's just kind of wicked, right? I mean, I it's, really love it. It's got like the piano. Um, there's a video game called Silent Hill too. I think I already brought it up on this podcast before, and that uses like a very similar sort of piano melody that just kind of runs out through the out the entire film, and it's kind of like that character's theme, and it feels that way with this movie. It's kind of always there when something kind of mysterious but creepy is kind of happening and yeah. it's great it's it's really good uh it, it to me and tell me if tell me what you thought if you took exorcist and you took phantasm and kind of morphed it and it, you know it didn't have that kind of feel to it that's interesting that you bring that up I, those aren't the movies i would sort of make the comparison to and now that i'm thinking about it i'm not sure how i would describe this movie like if I just had a talk from I, two different I'm movies. I'm talking about the sound. Oh, the sound the, of the, the film. sound of the music. Yeah. Which, yeah, yeah. It even seems very reminiscent of The Exorcist, but obviously that came later, right? Uh, no, Exorcist was 73. This was done in 77. Phantasm was what, 79? If you do, I don't know why, but this movie feels older than The Exorcist <laughs> and, does, and yeah. Phantasm. Uh, yeah. That's crazy. I just assumed, I don't know why that The Exorcist <laughs> wasn't like an 81 movie. Oh God, no! It's seventy. It just, it just, it, 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 it hold, It's such a damn good movie, but yeah. it just, it, 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 it's, it holds up, man. Okay. You know, and it, and but again, yeah. Uh, then I would say that the score, the that underlying melody that we hear throughout the entire movie is very reminiscent of The Exorcist. The music was done by a group called the Goblins, and from what I, uh, what I read or heard is, is Dario Argento used them a lot in his movies. And uh, damn, I had never heard of these guys before. And the score was just, oh my God. Dude. They do great work. It blew on me away. Yeah. yeah it blew great. me away. Yeah. I love, and and you got like a mixture of genres too in the opening credits. Cause it's kind of like, isn't there like a rock heavy track? Then it moves into like the melody. Like there's doing like a few different songs yeah, during that opening sequence, so. right? Yeah. I think you're right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of into all that. It's kind of like right at the get go, the movie is just kind of, putting you in like multiple emotional states just with its score and its editing. And I like all of it. it immediately. It just, it just, it set the tone. Like I immediately loved this movie. I, I mean, I, I, I just, after, after all of these things that are happening within the first, say five to 10 minutes, I was, I was, I was hooked. You know, what's interesting or what's curious to me and any other movie that like 10 minute sequence of, you know, I forget her name, uh, but the uh, woman, uh, which one, not our main character, but oh, the woman Susie. who gets killed. Oh gosh. I forget her name. Yeah. 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 The woman that gets killed along with her, like the woman she goes to. Yeah. I'm assuming yeah. another student that got kicked out. I'm curious why that scene happens after like the taxi cab scene or the main, our main character trying to go to the school being rejected or whatever. You know, like, wouldn't that be like a really great, like, um, opening sequence of the film? And then you get our main character, hmm. then going oh. to the school and all that, because it just feels like this weird interrupting, no, um, but bit. It, but I think it all fit though, because yeah. yeah, because she's, she gets there and it's, and, and it's the, the overwhelming sound of that, of that storm. And, and it's important to what's happening because she's 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 talking to somebody and she's yelling stuff and and she's she's very upset and so as the movie progresses susie starts to remember and it and it you know it ties in i think it's great i i love it yeah it almost feels like it's there chronologically but you know it's fine i guess it doesn't hurt the movie and i kind of like everything you know whenever i see that bright red blood i always miss it and i wish we got more of it like blood these days is typically like a dark red, but I kind of like love like the viscosity and the look of it, that like yeah. bright red blood because you know it's not blood. No, it to look doesn't it almost look like like you would go to a Home Depot or Lowe's and you have some paint mixed because you're looking for a yeah. certain red and that's what this looks like and that is that is quintessential Italian I love Italian that. horror. Yeah, I'm not too familiar with Italian horror, oh, but this, I, is, yeah, this is right on the money, man. This is what they're that's are known for. No, bright colors and and you know stuff like you know this uh gore you know uh, which we'll talk about as the movie goes on this but movie really isn't all that gory there's a couple scenes that are kind of like you know like Ew, but it's, this is not a gory movie at all fulci is a little more gory <laughs> yeah um i yeah. haven't seen a lot of argento's movies so i can't say that he's not at all i mean is the goriest movie we've seen so far dead alive would you say that's right 
that uh, for the podcast yeah i think so that one is yeah i mean let's say dead alive is a 10 this movie and the gore factor is probably like a four for me but i like the like the gnarliest thing that happens is at the very beginning of the movie the other girl gets like glass in her like oh, face you well, know and that's a that's yeah. about as rough as it gets i think what i what i'm referring to and this is what i've noticed in italian movies that i don't and if and if there is anything that i was not a fan of and i i said this earlier on is the some of the kills and and the ending i feel the kills are they go on too long you know like uh when when the girl gets uh she gets stabbed you know in most movies you get stabbed and then that's it <clears throat> excuse me she gets stabbed and then stabbed again but it's not like stab 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 it's like stab a couple seconds go by she screams another stab and it's <clears throat> to me it's over the top i think it's it's extended and it and it goes on too long that is my problem with it you know she's stabbed she's screaming we know she's dying then she gets thrown from the the what i don't know what she, i don't know if she was really thrown she was she fell and and gets hung and then and then her it's, her friend gets you know and, well, what i'm why i'm okay with all that sort of prolongedness in the kill scene is mm-hmm. it seemed that they wanted it to be uh exaggerated hyperbolic and loud you know so you it's almost like they killed her three different times in that scene yes because they stab her a lot then they stab her art and open it and then they yes. <laughs> throw her out of the window and then they have the cable hang her. So she's dying like 30 times in that scene, like as an example, almost, you know? Yeah. Well, again, it's reminiscent of Italian horror. This is what they do. It, it, is, it is always exaggerated. It's always prolonged. And that's what they do. And so this is the epitome of that. I don't know how serious you're supposed to take it, but... You know, it's it's so over the top for me that I kind of enjoy it for the artisticness of let's well, how crazy can we get with this kill? Mm-hmm. And they just kind of like had this rude Goldberg machine that's kind of happening that's just really fun to watch. Um, is it like really like gross in the context of the story? Yeah, totally. But when we get to the end, we find out these are very vindictive. They're witches, but they're also huge assholes, right? Like yeah. who, like I. Uh, the movie doesn't really explain why they're killing these people, right? Is it, it really is it doesn't. for like some witch power? I don't know. It doesn't, it can, doesn't explain it. I can tell you in the remake, as so a spoilers okay. for both films, yeah. um, in the remake, uh, there is sort of like this energy that they're feeding off of in like a pursuit of immortality for like one person, basically. So it, so in the remake, if they kill someone, they get like energy or something? Not exactly, like, yeah. but the ultimate goal is to do that. Mm. Um and but in here it just feels that if uh anyone wronged any of the witches or the school then they were just gonna kill them that's you know yeah that's kind of what about because i mean we know there's a ton of other dancers and and they look like they're fine so yeah maybe it's yeah maybe it's just someone that's wronged them or or you know well uh, the only people that died in this movie were people that kind of like held up the middle finger to the school in some way or they were trying to get they got too close to sort of the mythology behind the school and like the the nature of witches being pretty, present. Yeah, pretty much. That's exactly it. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Um the beginning of this movie, we've got our main characters. Her name's Susie or Su- Sarah. Susie. Okay. I yeah. hate that we've got two characters that both start with S. <laughs> I dude trying to follow along because we see a bunch of movies. We watch a lot of TV too. Mm. And we read or whatever. Names are hard when they start with the same letter <laughs> when I'm trying to remember all these other names and other works and it's, it just sucks. Okay. But it's Susie. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. She's our American dancer. Yeah. And I, it's, uh, who's the actor who plays, um, the foil and the love interest in the Indiana Jones movies. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. And I was thinking the same, I, I can't think of her name right now. Um, but yeah, I didn't look like her. It looks exactly. Is it Karen? No, it's not Karen Allen. No, I'm, is that is it karen allen uh it's so funny because i was just watching indiana jones a little bit ago uh raiders of the lost ark was on yeah um i almost want to say karen allen but am i wrong uh Ooh, give me a few like a bit yeah and i'll find um, out but, but yeah she did she did remind me of her that's so interesting that you say that yeah uh, karen allen is that yes, right yeah karen i was allen. right yeah i mean they, they have never like the same like face structure and eyebrows you know, whenever you find someone like this that has like that eyebrow control, 
it just makes it so interesting to watch them. Um, like, uh, Emil- Amelia Clark and Game of Thrones also has that same like eyebrow mm. control. <laughs> and I just love people's faces that kind of can do that. They're, it's just great. Yeah. Uh, but she has that here. So whenever she was on screen, I was like kind of mesmerized by yeah. the control of her, like her brow, you know? <laughs> so I, she, she's yeah. really good here. And I like her quite she a bit. She is really good. And I don't, I don't, I, I don't remember seeing her in anything else. And I'm shocked because she was really, she, I loved her, you know? Um, yeah. I mean, she, she was, I, I don't know. She was very, uh, uh, she kind of took, she, I mean, she, I know she's the main character, but she really took over the movie, you know? Um, I mean, I guess that's the whole, <laughs> that's usually the whole, uh, um, uh, point of, you know, of, of the star is to take over, but she was, she was great. I, I, I yeah. Um, she's kind of a non-entity for most of the movie though. Cause she's kind of just being like drugged and being <laughs> like tired and sleepy until like the very last bit of the movie. But doesn't she always seem calm throughout the whole movie? She seems level headed minus the eyebrows, but yeah, she always seems very calm and, and just always, uh, I don't know, always at ease. Doesn't seem to, you know, all this stuff is happening, but it doesn't seem to overwhelm her. You know, she's very level headed and not panicky. Even in the last bits of the movie where she's kind of facing this like really weird situation that's terrifying and, you know, supernatural, she seems to be mostly okay and handles herself properly. And that's kind of refreshing to see, especially in like an old 1977 horror film where it's like kind of treating its uh, female protagonist in a very, very strong, respectable way. Yeah. Yeah. I like it quite a bit because yeah. she is very smart, level headed. And not prone to really dumb, rash decisions. No, not not at all. Very, very, uh, very strong character. She's very matter of fact. She she makes. Uh, I think they even talk about that. She she makes a decision. She sticks to it. She sticks. You know. She and she's uh, not like wrong in her decision making either. No. Uh-huh. No. Yeah, she was right. Yeah, right, definitely about the about the the whole apartment thing. You know, and and uh, I yeah I I don't know. Did you understand that? Was it just really so? So she goes to stay, you know, obviously the, the one girl gets murdered and uh, she gets there. She checks in. The room's not available. Hey, you know, you can go stay at our third year student's apartment. You know, you're going to pair this. And she seemed to like it. And they were kind of adamant about her staying there. Why was that? Just so they could because she's new, they could have control over her. And this is where like the remake comes into play for oh, me. Oh, okay. Because that actually that movie actually explains why she oh. they want her there. Okay, so explain. Yeah. And that's because this person is almost like like they have some sort of like otherworldliness, some sort of power that would then lend one of the hot like the top of the hierarchy, which is to get immortality. Uh-huh. Like she has some sort of prescient power that can control other dancers and people and you know, oh, it's like okay. she's got witchy powers that, you know, the, the big <laughs> witch can use, I think. Okay. I'm remembering the movie right. And so, and, and so her and, staying but in, there? But in this movie, in the original, I don't know why. It almost feels like it's a power play, just some way to exert control with the dancers yep. to make it seem that they need to be here for whatever reason. Well, yeah, I mean, it's to, to yeah, I think, I think that's really it, you know. Um, I, I, yeah. You know, I, I, I guess, uh, insert, uh, dominance, I guess I, I really, I mean, you know, they're, they're, she has that episode, um, where she's, um, she's walking down the hall to go to class. Did you find it interesting that the, the, the room was called the red room? <laughs> Did you catch that? No, what does that mean? I, I don't know. I just, <laughs> with it, with it, with the, um, the fact that Argento just, I mean, there was red everywhere. It was yeah. red. It was red. It was red. Uh, the building was red, uh, you know, red, red walls and red wallpaper and red this and red that. And then the dance room was the red room. You know, we always we always uh, associate red with what, you know, dead, e- you know, maybe death, evil, <laughs> blood. I mean, you know, all of these all of these things. And so I just thought it was interesting that the the main dance room was the red room. But when she was going down the hallway. And she she caught eyes with one of the ladies, and then the ne- mm. and then the nephew, and then the music kicked in I, again. Just a I don't know. I, I I just thought it was a kind of a I don't know. The scene itself was very impressive. I just loved the whole feel. And she's walking down this hall, and she just feels like this 
this overwhelming feeling that something isn't right. And she becomes like kind of weak and faint and, you know. Yeah. This whole movie, I thought it was going to be set up that she was going to be like fantastic in some way, but that doesn't seem to be the case. So I'm not quite sure what their interest is in with this American girl from New York, you know, yeah. Um, that scene that you're talking about where that sort of mirror or glass reflects light into her, eye, her eyes. Yeah. And it's like some supernatural forces like overtaking her body or whatever. I thought, Oh, something like they put something inside her or something, you know? Yeah. Um, but that's not the case. Yeah. Um, it's kind of weird that all this stuff kind of happens around her, but she's not really important to them at all. Yeah. Right. They're, yeah, I, I mean, mean, I don't think seems, she's important at all. It doesn't, if she is, it's definitely not explained. Yeah. I mean, maybe it was as simple as they wanted her there. Something happens to her. She of course faints and she's, uh, you know, faints while she's dancing and she's, and she's bleeding and it's their way of, keeping her there but again but also, for like, what reason yeah I, they they drug her the entire time too yeah it was through the wine or whatever she was drinking mm-hmm. yeah i mean yeah yeah it's 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 definitely curious they don't explain any of that no i mean if they did i shouldn't have didn't catch it in the remake there's a reason for all that stuff is because this person is actually important for yeah. some reason like they've discovered she's important because we can get immortality from her in some way um but here it's like well why are they even in a school of dancers, you know? Like, why do they need all this, like, dancing school shtick around them? Yeah. You know? It's it's weird. Like, if they were somehow feeding on the dancers, they certainly like, kill all, the, all them a lot. Kind of interesting how uh, I'm sure they've always murdered. So how are these people not, like, found out in some way? Because it's been yeah. going on for, at this point, like, 70 years at least. Do you think maybe it's just, it's just their, you know, I mean, in order to do what they have to do. Uh, what is have, it even that they're doing, I, though, you know? It, like, isn't the, the whole a, goal of this coven of witches to make one witch, like, really powerful? Because I know. Well, she is powerful, yeah. I mean. And, but then and she gets just, feed. like, stabbed with an arrow and she dies. I know. <laughs> Not that um, powerful. But, I mean, I guess if you're, if you're running. <sighs> I mean, it's, I don't know, man. There's like it's, a level it, of mystery and unexplainedness in yeah. this movie. But I think we both agree that it doesn't really matter because everything no. else that kind of happens around it is just so interesting mm-hmm. and so well done that these things are very easy to ignore. And the surface level explanation for what's happening is kind of enough. Yeah. Yeah. And these Agreed. deeper questions, I don't need the answer. No. And I'm not sure why. Um, yeah, I'm fine with it. I I I don't care. Yeah, I'm yeah, okay with it. Um, me too. You know, it is interesting though. I wonder why it is. I don't know. It's just so they could charge tuition and they need money and to keep their I don't know to keep it going to keep the I don't I don't know. Well, you know. Sarah, who's a character that befriends Susie, um, and kind of reveals to Susie over the course of the film, basically the coven of witches. She leads her to the those answers over the course of the movie. Yeah. She dies, but they keep her body and they kind of reanimate it in some way at the yeah. very end to attack Susie yeah. to protect the, the big witch. So are, what are they doing with the bodies? Is it just for that? Is it some sort of ritual going on? Do they feed on the bodies in some way? Is it purely ritualistic? <sighs> Again, you know? I think it's just... The, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, and I don't have answers to any of those. And I think... The mystery of it is is fine with me. Yeah. I'm okay not not having all the explanations. Um, you know, it kind of sounds like in the remake they explained all of it. And you know, do you felt like it kind of took away from it? You know, now there's so much it. there's so much bad shit things going on in that movie <laughs> that the explanations somehow make it weirder in a more fun way. Like that oh, movie is okay. that movie is like wild. I will say this movie doesn't care about the dancers at all in the remake. The dancing is actually a huge part of the movie. Wow. Oh. You know, the the witches mythologies explain a little bit better. Mm. The Tilda Swinton old man thing. <laughs> yeah. There's a, like 30 minutes of that and it it works. Really? It's, yeah. It's 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 now a very weird intrigued. It's a very weird movie. Um I, I do like it. I can understand all the criticism around that movie, especially since it's like two hours or longer. Uh. So it's a it's fucking long yeah um it's it's one of those movies where you just kind of sit with it for a long time and just kind of steep yourself into it kind of like a like a deep pool of water you're relaxing in yeah except you know it's it's the opposite of relaxation sometimes (laughs) because you just go like the kills in that remake are pretty 
wild. Uh, so now you like, got me like, like there's wanna... a so like the main character of the remake, she dances and she doesn't realize she's doing it, but because she's got like this weird connection, mm-hmm. like this weird power, they're kind of using her dancing to kill another student. While she's unawares, it's wow. and she's like the person that's being like, she's like being contorted and bent in crazy ways. Oh wait, really? It's, yeah. Oh, I love shit like and that. And it's like intercut with the main character dancing. You know, it's it's pretty crazy. So so like she moves in in a not normal way. Like, like she's being like her yeah her like arm is oh. bending the wrong way. Her back is like twisting and then it like breaks it's it's crazy so now you got me i i, I now i was because I, I i rebel against these remakes but now you kind of got me like interested like I, maybe i want to check it out and kind of compare the two like remake is kind of the wrong word it's so kind of like a like reimagining a re- reboot or whatever they call it these days i don't even, they got so many different names you yeah know? It's, it's it's like taking the idea of this movie and then sort of putting more mythology into it right. you know what i mean yeah yeah um it's it's interesting but this huh. movie does stand on, on its own, right? Oh, yeah. Um, even if sure. its mythology isn't necessarily explained too hard. No. It just kind of like takes this idea of, you know, what if there was like a group of people that can make bad shit happen to people? And then what if they were in like a <laughs> dancing school? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> there you go. And you get this movie. And then, of course, what if you like put the most like have some of the best set dressing people on the planet, put them on the small, small budget horror movie? Yeah, that's great. Yeah, it really is everything about it, man. The, you know, uh, uh, wallpaper and and decoration and and furniture. It just everything worked. Everything worked. You know, it just it was it was brilliant to me. Uh, you know, and again, I I feel embarrassed that I haven't watched this until re- until basically today uh, i should be ashamed of myself Nah, you're good man <laughs> you, know? you can't have seen every single thing on uh, the i know but this even is at, like, considered like, like a classic you know especially seen it now like, though man i have i have um so uh let's see where i mean we're not really i mean we're just kind of jumping around you know um so she arrives to the school we meet the essentially the dean and then like the head instructor the head instructor is a hard ass um, the dean is like seems like a very nice, level-headed, logical, smart, nice woman. Yeah, um, that n- seems seem to know Susie's mother back in New York, right? Yes. Yeah, or her aunt. Her aunt. I'm sorry. Who aunt. was also a dancer. Correct. Yes. Um, you know, we know Susie's a good dancer. She knows. We know she's experienced. We kind of see other dancers. The only two characters we really see here is Sarah and Olga. Olga's only around for like 10 minutes when we see her at her apartment. Is it Olga or Helga? I don't know. It's, it's really something. Gah. We do this already. It's, uh, it's, gah. <laughs> it's something. Gah. I thought it was Helga, but it could be Olga. Maybe it is Helga. Helga is like an eccentric character, but it turns out she doesn't matter at all because we never see her again. She's not even relevant. I thought she was going to be like some I thought at interesting least she was, character. Like I thought she was going to be part of the coven. I thought she was at least going to be killed in a cool way for being a like dick doesn't she look like doesn't she look like a friggin' witch though she looked like a damn witch uh what's that you know that tv host with the long black hair TV like host you know, like they hair. play on it and ed wood oh um, elvira yeah she reminded me of elvira but without like the long crazy 80s <laughs> what? Hair or whatever. no she's she, got no. she's really white she's got the black hair and she she does like this theatrics when she's in the dance for her like back room. You, you know who she kind of reminded me of was uh, uh, the movie The Craft. Uh, Ver- Veruca, I think it's Veruca Balk or Veruca Balk. I'm probably saying her name wrong. She was in, you know, she was in like The Water Boy. She's been in a ton of stuff. Yes, I know who you're talking she about. She reminded it reminded me of her. Uh, yeah, I see that. Yeah, um, not Elvira. <laughs> I do come on black hair super white whatever in a horror movie to cut me some slack on that one that's I do. so you know she's not important you know she provides room and board for like a night and then that's about it yeah um Susie is responsible for basically the exposition of the movie and also being one of the you know girls who gets killed here um we also meet a blind man who has a really really sweet cute dog um who is kind of the pianist for the rehearsals um and that's oh and then we get uh we we met the meet this pretty boy who's also a dancer and he also almost seems like a janitor he's like doing a lot of chores around the place i think he because he can't he can't afford the the tuition yeah so he basically is their bitch 
<laughs> well, that's well, that's really in so many words what they said was that he's the bitch. <laughs> we also meet some Frankenstein looking guy just because he's huge. Yeah, some huge Romanian guy that doesn't yeah. talk and he's got, I don't a, know. He's got quite a quite a rough face. Um, yeah, he looks like he could throw you like three times over. <laughs> yeah, um, that's the bulk of it. Uh, she goes to dance, but she gets like this bright light kind of shoved in her eye. She gets sick from it and she faints. And then that's kind of an excuse to make her stay in the room and board in the school because, you know, we need to take care of you. You know, the doctor's order said you need a specific yeah. diet and all this stuff. <laughs> and what in the hell does he shoot her with that it's, syringe? I don't know. It's like some weird, maybe it's some witch drug. I don't <laughs> some know. Some witch drug, yeah. We don't know. It's, it's like some witch's brew. <laughs> it could be as simple as like adrenaline and i don't know man could be a steroid hell it could be a steroid man you know i don't know uh, how do you knows? fix like a wit a witch like nervous breakdown i don't know <laughs> nervous. um yeah. so that that's most of the movie in the beginning and then yeah. we're kind of slowly uh going through the mystery of the witches and what susie has been told from the character who dies in the opening or, you know, in the second scene after the opening scene. Um, and it's mostly just one long uh, thread being unraveled until we get to the climax it's, of the it's, scene. It's like a mystery horror. That's what this, you know, this is a very uh, uh, common with, um, with Italian. Uh, and I'm probably going to say this wrong, but they call it giallo, which in Italian means yellow. And they used to write these uh, uh, kind of pulp uh, novels. And they would they would come with yellow yellow covers, mm. and that's why. And so it just kind of morphed into you know, and that's what kind of uh, this movie is 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 they call it like a mystery horror or giallo, um, just means yellow. But but this is this is again a a recipe of Italian horror. This right. is what, this is exactly oh, this is what we're seeing. This is the epitome of it. So Susie is eventually killed off, um, presumably for. Getting too close. Oh, not the, Susie. Susie's our main character. Sarah. I know. Susie, Sarah. I Sarah's know. They, the need, one. they need to stop making Sarah, these names all the same. <laughs> Sarah, the friend, dies, and she dies in a pretty gnarly way. I that think was. she's kind of, she kind of, she's not even looking. She's kind of like taking care of uh, Susie and trying to tell her, like, hey, man, weird stuff is happening. Um, and uh, everything goes red. The lighting changes. She's like running away. She's kind of being cornered wherever she goes. Yeah. And then she goes to like a secret room, kind of like finds an escape, goes through the escape. She doesn't notice that it's full of barbed <laughs> wire. She falls into the barbed wire. And man, this was hard to watch, even though it's this was fucked up. Like, like obviously the actor was just in like, it's like wire, like normal wire or whatever. Even that would be dangerous in, in a, in a movie setting. Really? Yeah, hell yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was thinking about that watching this going, okay, yeah, it's supposed to be barbed wire, but it's probably just regular wire to make it look like it's barbed wire. She could probably, probably got cut during it. Oh, damn. Yeah. Okay. Well, shit. <laughs> oh, right. It's, well, okay, that, that sucks scene was way, the man. scene was fucked up, man. Yeah, and then that's like obviously one of the worst ways to go because that's not even killing you. You're just kind of stuck in an agony the entire time. Yes. Yeah. And, you can't get out of it. You're just gonna a bit basically bleed to death. And then you know after all that, like she's like five minutes running away in a panic. She gets all cut up in barbed wire with basically no way out. And then when she's about to get out, yeah, she they slice her neck with like a razor blade, yeah, like a yeah. switch razor or whatever. Yeah. We forgot to mention though the uh, the blind man because he, he died he, at he, this point. He he died already. Yeah. So the blind man. So some these fucking assholes. They're like you know. There's like the nephew who's like the nephew of the dean, and she's uh, the 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 nephew is always with like a nanny type character who seems to also be like a cook for the school, and they are probably going to mess with the dog in some way, and so the dog. Who's been like the sweetest dude ever? Really we only has. ever he's only ever been chilling outside yes. of the school. He's probably chilling out there for like eight hours, being which, a good which, dog. Yeah. And that would suck for him. That's way suck for him, man. And so like the dog, you know, he probably even knows that these guys suck. And they maybe probably, he senses evil, maybe? You think maybe he senses? I don't know. Totally. This is dog's dog. They do that a lot. Yeah. These where the dog senses, you know. This dog is also just a cool dude. So he probably just like a really good judge of character. And so they're probably going to mess with him. He bites the kid and then they fire the, uh, not only do they fire the pianist, the blind pianist, yeah. 
<laughs> she was but, very she was rude, disrespectful, mm-hmm. threw his cane. It's like this <laughs> is somehow bitch. your fault. <laughs> yeah. Um, That's fucked up. He's blind. Yeah. It throws all his shit. What the fuck, man? <laughs> yeah, huge assholes, man. So they not only do they fire him, like humiliate him with, you know, before all the students. But then after he has like one nice night at like a bar, where they're doing like this cool dancing. Um, I've, seen like, that, I've seen that dancing before. I have seen it in other, another movie. I like it. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a German thing. It's, it's, really a, cool. it's a German dance they do. Uh, I saw it in, um, uh, in uh, National Lampoon's European Vacation. Uh, where they're you know they're obviously in europe and they go to germany and uh the the same dance so i I thought it was kind of cool to see it again it's cool it looks really fun it does it's it's really cool because it's almost like they're dancing but it's almost like a show yeah you know yeah it seems like a really big like communal thing to do yeah where everyone is just kind of like they're either having fun doing it or watching it you know absolutely um but so anyway he gets one more night of that and like this guy's done nothing wrong. He's he hasn't. Done nothing, and dude. then he basically dies because they you know, they, they put they, some sort of what they like, like possess the yeah. dog, and they have the dog kill him. So they bite his neck. Yeah. So they basically killed him in the worst possible way. That okay. This guy could die. Yeah. And so look. Okay. Again, this is this is again my problem I had with it. Again. I love this movie, but a few few things that I'm probably being nitpicky at. I didn't like the fact that we could see that we knew the dog killed him, bit his neck, but then the dog is just eating, ripping the skin off. Again, I don't know how you felt. I felt it wasn't necessary. We knew he was dead. Dog ripped out his friggin' throat. He bled to death, but the dog's there chilling and, and ripping the skin off. That, to me... I didn't feel was necessary. What what do you think? For me, and this is kind of in contrast to the movie we talked about last week where all this, you know, like really terrible things happen and there's no comeuppance at all. Now bad things happen here in this movie. And again, it's 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 too much. But it makes the revenge all that much more sweeter. So um, you're okay you're okay with it? Um it's it's in service of how shitty these people are. And how great it is for this, their entire, you know, foundation to be broken underneath them by one person at the end of the movie. So even as much as I hate it, because I'm like, I'm on this guy's side and I wish they didn't possess the dog because I bet you even the dog feels guilty for what he did. Um, It makes their, their destruction, the witch's destruction feel better. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it builds them up to be as worse as the film wants us to think they are. All right. And maybe I'm just, you know, maybe it's, it's just, I, I, I'm, it was, it's not, it's not necessarily I'm overanalyzing it. I, I think I just, as a whole, I don't like those types of scenes that drag on, but, uh, but I respect what you're saying. It, it, you know, that it does at the very end when they're all basically destroyed, it makes it, it makes it, makes it sweeter. Uh, you know, the revenge, I, 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 I well, get that. It, it gives us a reason to want them to be destroyed. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And we get like three reasons for that because they've killed like at least four people by the end of the movie. Five people. Yeah. Not to mention, that. I'm sure all the hundreds they've killed along, the, you know, over the years. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, probably thousands, you know. Right. Um, so that kind of gets us to the end of the movie. Like surprisingly, um, this was kind of this is one of those movies where it, you're just kind of <laughs> enjoying everything that's on screen because yeah. everything like every frame is like a painting. Um, it, even it, if it's only yeah. just like a color trip for you, it's all looking really great. It is. It um, is. We do we talk? We should talk a little bit about her meeting with um, Sarah's friend. So who's the doctor? Is it professor or he's doctor? A, he's doctor? a psychiatrist. Psychiatrist. She had seen, and then they stayed friends. And again, great scenes. You know, uh, you know, he 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 fills her in with some knowledge, but then. I don't know. It was some sort of, I don't know what that was. It was some sort of like um gathering of some sort. What was it like a banquet? Cause there was other people that were around uh-huh. and I don't know what that was, but then a guy who is, uh, who, you know, who has a ton of knowledge on this, on this particular subject, uh, you know, talks to her about, about witches and, and the history and, and the coven and all of these things and kind of breaks everything down for her. really, really fills her in on everything. And I just, it, it was, I don't know. It was, it was, uh, I loved, I loved the whole, the whole scene. Um, and I loved some of their shots, 
even though yeah it, right like I, I was into this too they do like, like the this angles l- the, the low the, angle shot yeah. it's almost like distracting but the whole movie's doing this so it just feels more like a stylistic choice that just unsettles you because you don't usually have it feels like they're very far apart but they're sitting right next to each other and <laughs> yes. it's because they have this low angle <laughs> shot and behind both of them is just the sky and it's like that for both of them so you've got like the camera here and then you got like this triangle because they're on one end of one on the out of the corner the other one's on the other corner and just kind of alternating between the two it makes them feel very very far away and isolated and i like that why, why do you why do why do you think we don't see that that often is it just kind of a lost art where well you know we do see stuff like that if you look at just like ozymandias like the one you know people consider the, the greatest breaking bad episode we get like uh this rule breaking where you've got you know you've got classic reverse shot but it's all within that 180 degree line mm. you know where the camera's only on one side of that line but then in ozymandia it's just to like fuck with you and because everything's crazy so we're gonna break the the rule of filmmaking here and go across that line and it just unnerves you you know so you only see that when the it's trying the the filmmaking is trying to be in tune with the story and make you feel unsettled in some mm. way that's kind of hard to pinpoint without thinking like or just knowing okay this filmic technique is being used purposely here yeah. and they do that here and it's really great I just wish we saw more of it. Not not necessarily in this movie, just as a whole. I I, I love to see it's, it's it's I love to see odd odd different angles and camera. You know, Brian De Palma's you know notorious for that. He has these really distinct uh, camera angles, and he uses them not in all of his films, but but a lot of his films. And it's just you don't see it a lot. And I I just feel like it's a lost art that has has been lost it's just been lost along the way where people know you don't I, think I so? just think you're not watching the right movies then you know what you're probably right maybe i'm just not selecting the right ones to see the to uh, see this you know what i love is the zoom in or even the zoom out i fucking love that it, yeah. it can be the hokiest thing on the planet <laughs> i, I love it too <laughs> if there's one thing filmmakers love to do it's to make shit make it seem like you're not watching a movie but when you do a zoom in or a zoom out you're bringing attention to the fact that the camera exists and it's all one shot, right? Because it's going from it's, you just you, he's, you see the mechanics of the filmmaking. Tarantino does these really uh, well. Yeah, um, he does it in like what Django Unchained, and when we're meeting uh, Candy, uh, DiCaprio's oh, character, yeah, yeah, Candy when he's Mace. like yeah. you know being introduced for the first time, and he looks back at them. Yeah, you know, like yeah, it's so like loud and obnoxious, but I love it. And they do that a lot in this movie, and I love it every single time. Yeah, I, see, and I don't have to have it a lot. I just love when it's when 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 they when they tell the audience, "Hey, look at look what we can do." Yeah. You know, we're not going to do it a lot. We're not going to shove it down your throat, but look at this. And it just and and it, and and here we are talking about it. You know, and it may you know I didn't I didn't feel like it was done a lot in the movie, but when it was done, it was quite effective. You yeah. Know? I, um, it, yeah, this movie has is nothing but style. <laughs> absolutely. When a movie is nothing but style, that can be overbearing, but it works here. It doesn't. It feels all in service of the story. Whereas you know there are other movies that are all style um, that don't work. Uh, there's one movie I'm thinking of, but I don't remember what it is, mm-hmm. what it's called, and it's 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 a fine line, but this mm-hmm. movie doesn't cross it. No, I don't think so at all. Um, so okay, now we know everything. The the sarah friend and then the friend of the friend is all exposition for <laughs> yeah. the witches and the witches coven and all that stuff kind of like the rules of what's going on behind the school yeah and then we get to uh susie not eating the meal that she's been given throughout the whole movie with the wine and all this other she fi- yeah she finally she just doesn't yeah. eat it so now she's yeah. not going to be super sleepy like she has been through the rest of the movie and then when she's able to be awake she then stays up and then kind of follows the yeah. footsteps that she's heard, counts the footsteps, and makes it to, um, you know, where they are, u- using the clues that she remembers from the dead student at the very beginning of the movie, and remembering the words that she couldn't hear the first yeah, time. What was through it? The, secret, secret and it was like secret and room I, and I, I, iris, blue, blue iris, and like turn something. the iris flower. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so um, she makes it there, and she discovers the witches. And yeah, the, is it a coven? I, did you know that? I didn't know this, and I looked this up, so I'm not I'm not some witch expert. But I, I, the word coven, I, I mean, it's an older word, of course, but it means 
it's a it's a group of 13 people that meet oh yeah it's like a yeah it's like I some, yeah i didn't know that either i don't know why it's 13 i guess because 13 is such an unlucky number but but yeah it's it's like a meeting of of like 13 witches and they call it i i yeah this is another thing <laughs> that the remake changes and the remake they're like the they're all witches and they can all talk to each other with their minds it's oh. it's it's crazy dude so it's, they'll just like have like it's a, like they're shining <laughs> yeah but it's like it's like in the shining i haven't seen dr sleep so i don't know it's different in that movie it's pretty good i liked it yeah uh, it, cool. it wasn't great but it was good i think you would like it cool um in the shining they're just kind of staring at each other or whatever or staring at something and having that communication like telepathy like long distance but they're like kind of just focusing on it in the remake they're just kind of like doing everything like normal and even talking and all that stuff uh, but like there's like another conversation going on in all in their heads in in um in the remake is it similar to this one where it's both men and women that are witches or is it just is it's it all, just women it's like all women even the school is like an all women dance school i mean because would you say in this one that i mean it's not it's not quite explained but are we to believe believe that just the women are witches but i mean because there's also guys that are part of this see i mean the nephew that that the romanian kid uh, or I'm sorry, not the remaining kid, the remaining guy, the big towering figure. Are they witches or are they just kind of like. I thought they were servants. Of ser- the witches. Servants. Okay. So then, okay. All right. Yeah. Because I mean, witches are always supposed to be women, right? I mean. Well, that's why they're called witches, right? Yeah. yeah. You yes. can't be a male witch. You can't really, be a male witch. Because then you're what? just like a wizard. <laughs> so if you're, if you're a. W- there, is there a word for like. I don't Witch know. always has like a negative connotation except in like Harry Potter. Is there like a negative word for wizard? Oh, warlock. Oh, hey, there good. Go. that's good. Sweet. D and D helps me for the first time ever. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, so yeah, she kind of figures out how to get to their secret room, and you know, and the secret room is really just like a cool hangout spot. <laughs> yeah, right? because yeah. there's like there's like one chair, and everyone is just kind of like surrounding her, and the the person in the chair is the dean, so the dean is probably the head witch. Um, but not the not the like, yeah, not, yeah the, not like the what do they call her in this movie? I forget. The Black Witch, the Queen, Queen, Black Queen, Black Queen. There we Black go. Queen? Is that yeah. sound right? So the Black Queen is like the big, big witch. Yeah, um, she's the one that basically the, all of their energy, right? It, it, you know, if she's okay, the whole coven is okay. Yeah, you know, and she's she, like it, you know the Queen Ant almost like, except I think in ants they can like replace the Queen. So imagine like an ant colony where, you know, if the ant dies or the queen ant dies and the whole colony dies. Or, or like in vampire movies where you, cl- you, cure, you, kill the, you kill the main vampire and supposedly all of its servants I mean, die. With, this is a uh, huge you know, cliche. <laughs> you also see like sci-fi movies like kill the main computer or something, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's what, that's what the case is here. And so but yeah. the, whole, the, whole, the whole setup to this. You know, and and this is why I enjoy the, you know, again, it's just very, it's very visual. Uh, The music of we we've explained is 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 sets the tone in this this slow walk down this kind of hallway for her to get to this room. The build up, it's just it's very intense, you know. Yeah, And, and it and it and it and it's perfect. It's it's executed so well. Yeah, I mean, the music makes this movie. Um, I do feel like the movie is overused quite just a tad, but I like the song so much that I'm okay with it. Um, she discovers the witches. She's trying not to be seen. She thinks she's seen by the nephew. Uh, big guy kind of investigates. She kind of backs away. Where she's backing away into, she sees the dead Sarah, and they've got her in like this ritualist, like almost Jesus-like pose yeah. where her her limbs have been like, nailed into like some sort of like um podium or something i, I don't know what that table. was it looks like she was laying flat right they like pin put pins in her eyes and she's all beat up yeah it's yeah. it's very disrespectful because didn't didn't the dean at this at this point the dean was like look that american the american girl we need to kill her mm-hmm. she's trouble let's get her the hell out of here right well I they mean, don't want to get her out of they just want her dead well that's yeah. what i mean yeah yeah um so yeah, so she's kind of running away for that, but she was just discovered. She probably would have been dead anyway. And then in her attempts to sort of hide away, she discovers a black queen's room. And we don't, we haven't seen the black queen up until this point. We've just seen her like silhouette. And we've heard this. 
kind of the snoring, I guess. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Heavy she's breathing. very distinct stro- snoring with like a whistle. I mean, we, we, we find out she's, I mean, I don't even know how old she is, right? I mean, she's at least 100 years old, I think. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, she's, she's in this, this room and the, you know, we get this kind of interaction. I mean, you know, really Susie isn't saying anything, but it's this, this black queen is, you know, you, you found me, you know, you're here to kill me. And I don't think that was really it at all. It was just, she was looking for a room to, to hide in. Yeah. <laughs> she, picked, she picked the wrong room, but I mean, well, I'm here. So <laughs> Well, she wasn't even going to do anything. And then like the black queens, like six, the dead Sarah onto her. And that's one of the most terrifying things I've ever seen. (laughs) The makeup was killer. Um, It was. And she's just like running at her with like a knife or something. It was terrifying. She still has pins in her eyes. I don't know how they did that. Um, It's crazy. I don't know. Yeah. No, it was, it was pretty, uh, pretty sick. But it's it's raining again, and there's lightning going on, and she's able to see like this silhouette of the Black Queen because she turns invisible, so she couldn't see her anymore. But she sees like the silhouette whenever there's like a lightning thing. That's like a like a streak this, of white this, light. This is my I I I had a humongous problem with this. Is this like the best they could do with this sending? Because every like, this is where the hokey comes in. I just thought that was so bad. I thought that was so bad. I thought, couldn't you have conveyed this better? So with some weird, like light outline, I don't know. <laughs> it's uh it's okay to be wrong sometimes, dad. Uh, this works a hundred percent. You, you, you found this to be okay with everything else that I've seen in this movie. I'm like, whatever, man, <laughs> maggots are falling from the ceiling. You know, this, this yeah. old lady who can't move at all turns invisible and that's how it works <laughs> to be seen whatever yeah what is she she's some uh um what was that what was that it was some sort of like statue or figurine fell right uh yeah, peacock was it a it peacock? looks like a peacock yeah. and it had all these little i don't know feathers but they were not really feathers i mean you could almost call it like an arrow or a some knife or something that it you know it was something sharp she could pick up and use as a weapon to defend herself or yeah you know. and she she kills the little asshole so yeah. she dies. That means every witch dies. That also means the school is like crashing down and she escapes. And I, I guess all the other dancers died in the school. We don't know. <laughs> they don't explain <laughs> Just as that. collateral damage, maybe. <laughs> That's not Hopefully cool. they got out of there. Uh, maybe, uh, well, weren't they gone? Yeah, remember remember the, the one of the women said they were all gone for was some Was that that sh- same yeah, night? Yeah, okay, that was the same sweet. Night. They went to like a show. Or- that means only the assholes died. Uh, only, yeah. Yeah. All yeah. the witches and all their... Sweet you know, servants or whatever died, but it w- wasn't that ending super abrupt. It seemed yeah. like it, like it wasn't drug out at all. No, like I I felt her walk down the hall <laughs> took longer than the actual like ending. You know, it was like stab, everyone dies, uh, uh, school catches on fire, she's out, credits. <laughs> the movie knows when's to end, man. And yeah, I, I I I had no problem with it because some sometimes movies they just drag it out. Yeah. You know, yeah, I agree. And this movie just kind of ends. And hey, that's all the story we got. Let's finish this up, and you can go throw away your popcorn and enjoy the rest of your night. <laughs> um, I like this movie. It's pretty good. It's really fun. It's a really great time. It's great to look at. Uh, the score yeah. itself is almost worth the price of admission. Dude, serious, I, I was. I, I watching the movie and listening to the score I was like I want this I want it on a ringtone I want it, I want to be able to use it the the whole um when the music's playing and it does that noise like which like in a weird kind of I don't know you know voice I loved it I I absolutely loved it man you know uh yeah I everything about this like I said a couple things here and there but but as a whole great movie you know I uh, just wish I would have seen this a long time ago, you know, but uh, anything else, anything else uh, that uh, we want to talk, talk about anything we forgot? I don't think so. I think we hit everything, right? No, I think I'm good. I think we've talked about everything I want to talk about. Yeah. I mean, great, uh, great movie. Visually stunning. Uh, great music. Uh, acting's very good. Gosh, you know, really good movie. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right, then. I guess that'll do it. All right, sweet. Well, that's it for this episode. Uh, come back next week. I think we're talking about the the 2020, which is interesting. I don't think we've done a movie this recent. 
uh, The Invisible Man, uh, which I hear is pretty good. So uh, let's hope it is. So uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to follow us at both Twitter and Instagram at Ear for Fear. You can also check out our website, earforfear.com. There you can purchase merch and stay up to date on current episodes as well as news and events. We hope you come back and get an earful. See you soon.